Hey, I'm back. So, now that we have our spindle wired up and ready to go, let's go ahead and get it connected to our Onefinity controller so that it can control everything. You're going to need a lot less stuff. Uh, let's start with the DB25 breakout board. Uh, Onefinity sells a breakout board on their website, um, but I got this off of Amazon. It's still a DB25, so it'll fit in the back of the controller. All little accessories in there, but yeah, it'll fit. It'll fit in the back of the Onefinity controller. Then you're going to need some wire. This is some uh, 16 gauge wire that I had from a previous project. You know, you get a whole bunch of it. So you're just going to need two strands of that to connect into the board. And, you know, of course, wire strippers. So not too heavy there. Just a straight connection here. Connect to the VFD. And then uh, you just program everything. So we'll get started. Okay, so... First off, we're going to open our breakout board. Now, this breakout board looks a little different than the one on the Onefinity site. Um, but breakout boards are fairly generic. So this one was a few bucks cheaper than what they had on the Onefinity site. And if you already ordered your machine and then got your spindle later, uh, I mean, it's Amazon, so it gets here in a couple of days. Anyway, uh, you may be able to see that it has numbers. So one through seven here. And then eight through eight through thirteen, and then fourteen to sixteen, and then twenty to twenty-five, and ground down here. So uh, the ones we need are thirteen and fourteen, which are on opposite sides of each other. Um, but all you really got to do is loosen this screw, and they were so nice enough that they gave me a tiny screwdriver so just going to loosen up 13 and then loosen up 14 which is over here okay so uh, so yeah just loosen those up and that'll allow the cord to go in Alright, so then I uh, went ahead and just snipped the ends of my wires. Um, I pulled about, you know, a wingspan's length of cable. Pretty sure that's an accurate term of measurement. Uh, just because I wasn't entirely sure I was going to mount my VFD, but I gave myself some extra slack just in case. So, uh, like I said, this is going to go into 13, which is over here. that in there. Just tighten it down. Nice and snug. And then our blue cable will go into 14, which is over here. Tiny screwdriver. Okay, so yeah, there you go. And ta da, that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, so I'm gonna try to gracefully move these cables around in here. Oh, get a little slack there. And then get a little slack here. But basically what you want is you just want to get these cables right into here. On the other side of that thing. Make sure you don't pull it too much so that it slips out of the connector. And then you have all your necessary tiny screws in here as well. This is a stress relief bit. So if you decide to add more cables in here later... You really just put that there. It'll just apply a little pressure. So if you're pulling on these cables, you know, it won't uh, bunch up. So I'm going to 
put all that together and then we're going to go over to the VFD. Okay, so before I move over, I just want to show you, um, added in the extra pieces. So we have the uh, stress relief there and then uh, you kind of halfway thread these in to both sides and then you just close it up. So for all you old school kids, this looks really familiar. All right, it's a little cramped over here, but we have the breakout board plugged into the Onefinity controller. I have reconnected the spindle. And now I'm going to plug in the water pump, the VFD, and then turn on the controller. And then we'll get into configuring all of this. Okay, so back at the VFD. Take that out. All right, so at the very end of this top part, we have a RS minus and a RS plus. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, get some more light over here, but there we go. RS minus, RS plus. So what we're gonna do is Your, uh, the one you connected to 14, which is my blue, is going to connect to the minus, and then my 13 is going to connect to the plus. And you can kind of route this through here any way you want to. So we already had a hole. Um, there's another little port partition here. You can put those that through. So whichever works for you. Okay, so... Just gonna do 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 do. Do 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 me do be do. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here. Let's say all right. Go into my 13. Then to do go into my 14. Okay, and that's pretty much it uh, for that part. No extra wiring needed. Now we get into the configuration of the VFD. Okay, so now we're gonna set the values inside of here to make it communicate with the breaker breakout board and the controller. And I'm gonna give you a bunch of settings. And if you're ever like, hey, where did all those settings come from? They're in the back of the manual. So page starting on page 19 of the manual that I have, it gives you PD00002 all the way down through all the other settings that you need, but I'm just gonna go through the ones that you actually need. So you're gonna start with hitting program. All right, so PD, and we're gonna go to PD down zero. Hit set, and that's gonna be set to zero. Now it's on PD001. We're gonna hit set, and that's gonna be two. Now we're on PD002. Set, set that to two. PD003, uh, we don't need to set, but we do need to set a different number, so we're going to go to uh -oh, program again, you're going to shift, it moves the button over, 
And we're going to go to PD1, shift 6, 3, set, and that's going to go to 1. PD164, set, that's going to be 1. PD165, that's going to be 3. And then we're going to go back to PD... Zero, 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 set, and we're going to make that one. And that sets uh, all our parameters in there, locks it in, so you hit program again. And now we go to the software to configure it there. Okay, so we are in the software. Um, I don't have a fancy screen sharing program, but we'll just kind of go in here. So you're going to go down to Tool, Tool Type. Uh, we have a Wan Wang VFD. Um, so in here you'll see uh, Tool Reversed. Uh, I believe my spindle is spinning in the correct direction, so I'm not going to check that. Um, but if it was spinning in an opposite direction, you can click that. Uh, RPMs is 2400. Minimum spin, we're going to set that to zero. Enter. Uh, let's see. Tool enable mode, disabled, disabled. Uh, bus ID is set to 1, baud is 9600, parity is set to none, mod bus status is disconnected. So, what we do now is since we just made those quick changes, we're going to hit save, and now mod bus says connection OK. That means that it has a connection to the VFD controller, which is good. Now, all of those settings I gave earlier are located here. So PD000, 012, 163, 164, 165 are all here. So if you ever need those, uh, you can do, go start set your settings, scroll down into the notes, and now you know this is what the values need to be in your VFD controller. Okay. So now that we have that set, let's go back to control. So manual G code. I'm gonna do M three space S one thousand. Okay. Um, that should be the code manual G code to start the spindle. So we're gonna hit play. It's automatically adjusted when I hit that. Uh, we're at 16.66 hertz. And my spindle is going in the uh, correct direction. So we are in there. And I'll hit stop. Okay, so uh, the last thing before I wrap this up is to get your display so that you can see the actual RPMs and not the hertz. So actually very simple. All you hit the shift button and you can see the display starts changing. Hit shift again, 
shift again, and now it is on ROTT, which is rotations, uh, RPM. Uh, so I'm gonna go over and I, I preset for 10,000 RPMs. So I'm just gonna go hit play. Okay, so you just saw that my RPMs were not what I had programmed to be in the system, so I had to do some digging and found out that there are two more default settings in here that need to be changed to get the correct display. So we're gonna do that right now. So you're gonna go to program. You're going to go to PD 10 set. Uh, if yours says 6.5, we'll need to change that to 8. So 8.0 and set. And that setting is the minimum voltage. So set. And then you're going to go to PD144. So 4. set and that says 1440 and you need to make it 3000 so zero zero three set program all right so now I'm gonna try that again Set my parameters to go to 10,000. Right. So you have to put in all your settings. So before you put in any settings, you have to go to PD 000. Set it to zero which means uh, that you are uh, open to make changes. Then go make those two changes that I just said. And then when you're done, program PD000 set to one. Okay, so now, I, I count that as a win. So from a lot of cable management that I need to take care of, we are set up with our spindle and VFD with our Onefinity controller. So the VFD connects to the controller. The controller can command the spindle to start and stop. Uh, the VFD now displays the RPMs and we fix that one little default setting and now it displays the correct number of RPMs. So just in case you were running into that issue where it was only showing like half the number, uh, you just gotta go open up the settings, change those two settings and then lock it back down so it sets. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was super informative. This was probably the easiest part of this whole uh, spindle setup. So I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, leave them below and thank you.